Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $5,000 Modern Open here at ApexCon in Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. we got three rounds down, but round number four is going to be starting here in just a few minutes. Ross, why don't you give us a rundown of what we're going to be watching in round number four. Well, our players here in round four have brought a little bit of spice to the table. Uh, so starting with John Tagliarini playing, is it Murktide? Not a deck that is particularly spicy, but his list does have a copy of Detective's Phoenix in it, which is a pretty cool card, especially if you get to bestow onto a Murktide Regent, maybe yeah. give it haste, get a surprise kill that way, and notably collect evidence can trigger Murktide Regent, pumping it even further. Uh, so a little bit of extra aggression. Also has two moons in the main deck, one Magus and one Blood Moon. Uh, so could just sort of get the opponent in game one if they don't fetch appropriately around that. Uh, and then his opponent, Constantine Kansarkis, can can Tarsis, sorry. Uh, I think you mean Tysis. <laughs> Maybe Catharsis. Constantine Catharsis brought all the spice. This is a Demir reanimator deck. Uh, reanimating not with Gorio's Vengeance, but with Persist. So Archon of Cruelty is the main target. Though oh, there, yeah. Though there is a Sarah's Emissary. Well, they also have the cool Troll of Cause of Dune, Psych on 1, Persist on 2. Yeah. Little aggro start. So also helps them play through things like Blood Moon. Uh, no grief, though. Oh, I figured this would be a grief deck for sure. Uh, no grief scamming. Instead, they're going for more of a blue shell playing counter spells to back up uh, the reanimation plan with a counter spell itself, spell snare, spell pierce. Have a couple of copies of Sink into Stupor that can deal with problematic, problematic permanence as part of the mana base. And then Psychic Frog as a key discard spell yes. that also lets you play a little fair. Uh, so a really cool deck here from Constantine. Both these players are two and one, so fighting to stay alive for the top eight. I haven't run the numbers myself, but at 95 players, I, I think the next two or two might sneak in, but you don't want to be hoping uh, for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, the players are ready in the feature match area, and we're ready too, so let's head on down and watch round number four. Is it Murktide versus Demir Reanimator? We'll be underway here in just a moment. These players have the green light. Looks like Constantine on the left there on the play. Going to lead off here with a dual land of some kind. Taglarini is going to play Thundering Falls as the land Surveil 1. Surveil land has to be pretty good in the Murktide deck, considering it has multiple things that care about the graveyard. Nice pickup for them, for sure. Yeah. All right, we're going to cycle Troll Cause of Dune, and we're down to 18, so it has to be a Watery Grave. We're going to go get a Swamp of some kind here. It can be a Dual Land of some kind. It could be Undercity Sewers for Surveil. could just be a Basic Swamp. Those are the three options. Gets Basic Swamp, knows that Blue Red decks occasionally play Blood Moon, so maybe just wants to make sure he doesn't lose to that Blood Moon effect early on. Could also be protecting his life total. Yep. And doesn't want to shock again from Watery Grave. Yep. All right, we're going to go back to Constantine. See if Psychic Frog comes down here. I think he just drew one. Plays one from hand. It is. Here it is. Let's get Psychic Frog on the screen. Preferably this art if you got it, because this is my favorite art of them. I believe these are the showcase ones. And a big old brain Psychic Frog going to eat up the hand and eat up the opponent pretty quick. Red base removal pretty weak against it, because you can just discard cards. Here is Darcy. Darcy plus Bobble going to surveil one. Taglarini did keep with the surveil last turn. So if he misses a land drop here, I'm going to have to imagine that's a huge punt. But I think he has Sink into Stupor as a land, maybe. Easy one to play here. Yeah. See if he has something to, worth playing it untapped for and doesn't just plays it tap. We're going to Bobble on the upkeep. Uh, so Taglarini, not sure what Constantine's list is like. Said going for the upkeep bobble to play around discard spells, which are not in Cantarsis' list. Well, now we might see the reanimation part of this deck unfold because Psychic Frog is untapping. We can attack here, maybe get a card if there's no chump block. Uh, getting a card either way. Either a yeah. random one from our deck or the DRC from Taglarini's. Is that a counterspell drawn? Psychic Frog untapping with a counterspell in hand is like maybe the scariest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Bobble draws on the upkeep for Tagliarini. All right. A couple yeah. lands. Frog definitely looking better than Dragon's Rage Channel here. 
Well, it costs two mana, of course. It's twice as good. Karmagoyf looking better than some mana lions here. <laughs> Alright, Taglarini has some red base removal, but he's going to need a couple of them, really, if he wants to get the frog down. It's like about five cards in hand for Constantine, so could protect from double bolt if that is five. Might be four. Looks like we just have a passing of the turn. In turn, we're going to play Tain Indulgence, draw two, discard one. The discard part of this effect, not nearly as important once you already have a discard out on the table like Psychic Frog. I would imagine Tagorini just lets this one go because it's not actually accumulating card advantage. Draw one, draw two. Looks like another indulgence in a land. Spell snare in hand as well. May want to hold on to that one, but mostly for just winning Counterspell Wars. Yeah, Counterspell is the only card, or Counterspell and Iteration are the only cards in Taglarini's list that snare hits. But... Well, it does go ahead and discard it. Can fetch on the instep, decides not to. Quickly draws. Land number four is Island. Now four cards in hand, so two bolts could take care of this frog. There is also a counter spell among the four for Constantine, so you discard two others to protect from the first bolt, counter the other bolt. Frog will recoup that card advantage pretty quickly. Here's if Taglarini's plan here is to like fetch, play bolt, try to get Delirium and block so that we can deal six. All right, well, we are blocking. Yeah. Very well might be. Alright. Four damage. Lightning Bolt target frog. Surveil one. Surveil is going to resolve. Bobble to the Ooh. graveyard. So not pushing closer <laughs> to Delirium. That's tough. Normally Bobble's the one you want to hit to get Delirium. With one already in the graveyard. It's not going to help very much. So, Kintards, it's going to need to discard three cards if he wants to save the frog here. Oh, a little dice. A little dice, a little dice. All right, so right now it's a 3 4, so that's going to make it survive the bolt. We're going to discard Tainted Indulgence yeah. as well. So we lost backup frog, a land, and an Indulgence. Does Tagliarini have another piece of red removal? Maybe. Yeah. I, I can't imagine he does if he let the. DRC die first. Definitely, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would have loved to have seen him maybe surveil, looking for the fourth card type. Especially if he's just getting tap steam vents. Yeah, it doesn't have a second Thundering Falls to fetch. For ah, him. that that makes more sense. Okay. So a desperation attempt to get the Psychic Frog fails, and now going to go back to Taglarini's way, and he has to deal with this big baddie. On the bright side, Taglarini has Delirium now. Yeah, putting the creature in the graveyard <laughs> got him there. That's true. I see a Murktide Regent. Reordains the draw. Let's start with that. So that'll be a second spell. We could get the Murktide to a 5-5, five five, which really isn't big enough. It needs to be with one card left in Cantarts as a sand. You really need a 7-7. Seven seven. All right, keeps the fetch line on top. Maybe he has plans to go fetch, play another one mana draw spell into Murktide. Trying to see what else is in Taglarini's hand, but his, his hand is still relatively stocked. I think there's a counter spell hanging out over there. And Turn two Psychic Frog on the play. Just got under it. Expressive Iteration. Okay. Let's see if Constantine wants to go for a Counterspell here. Is Constantine's last card still that Counterspell? I think so. Okay, so we're so. going to get uh, under uh, City Sewers to Surveil 1. Constantine going for a little more information before he decides whether or not to use his counter spell. Uh, 
All right, take a peek. Gonna leave it on top and then counterspell. That's bad news for Taglarini. <laughs> All right, Frog, gonna get in there for four. Draw a card. Oh. Jump. So now there's three instants and sorceries for Merktide to eat. That'll get it to a 6-6, six, six, but that's, again, not big enough. Considers the play for Constantine. Even 7-7 seven, seven at this point wouldn't be big enough. Says go. Taglarini going to fetch. Likely going to go get a Steam Vents here. So Taglarini does have one sink into Stupor in the deck that he could find to reset the sizing on the frog. Could find a couple more red burn spells with Delirium and Holy Heat will deal six. So Frog can survive that if Constantine pitches both cards remaining in hand. And then another red removal spell on the same turn for Taglierini would finish it off. But he's going to need to find it quickly. Just draws another land. I think he's got Merktide Counterspell, so we might be able to get something down here. Again, as Ross said, it doesn't quite check the Frog, but it might be something to help turn the tide over the course of multiple turns. At three spells in graveyards will be a 6-6. Six, six. The frog right now is a 4-5. I think there's another counter spell drawn for Constantina. I think that was the surveil on the turn. So he saw a second counter spell and said, okay, I can use the first to deal with the iteration. Fortunately for him, though, I think the smirk tide is just going to resolve thanks to this counter spell from Taglarini. Yeah, and then the last card in hand is another iteration, it looks like. Okay, both players with a big blue threat, one card in hand. See who comes out on top. So, another card for Constantine here. Ooh. Persist on Troll? Okay. okay. All right. At least it's not Archon. But now the, the Frog can attack. It's a 4-5 with one card in hand to pitch to make it a 5-6, trying to attack into a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I think I would have just sent it. Yeah, if, if Taglarini blocks, then you don't get a troll back, but you pump the frog up and you deal with the Murktide. Uh, uh, once the frog is a 6-7, like one on Holy Heat you don't care about. Clearly Taglarini doesn't have more red removal. Had opt spots to use it earlier in this game. But besides, I want to get a troll down. Constantine's list, with all the, you know, considers and counter spells, doesn't really have removal. Just one bone shards in the main. Uh, needs to reanimate an Archon if he wants to remove the Merktide otherwise, and it's quite a ways away from that. Yeah. Both players here are playing Sink into Stupor, which is a great uh, temporary counter spell or answer to a yeah. big thing like that, but the Fatal Pushes in Constantine's deck often look underwhelming here. All right, here's Darcy and Expressive Iteration, and it resolves. Surveil going to look before Iteration resolves. All right, we're going to keep it. Okay. Looks like a Tamiyo. And Spiral of Canal Blood Moon. Maybe, I don't even know if you care about the Blood Moon, but maybe it's better than the Spire Bluff if you're just casting Tamiyo. And there's only one basic, or I don't know, it's two basics plays. Swamp Island cuts Constantine off of Counterspell and Sink into Stupor. I think there's only one island for Tagalarini right now, though, so that could be a problem because it turns off all his stuff, too. Yeah. Chose but to the... fetch Steam Vents after fetching an island. <laughs> okay, here's Tamiya. We do technically have three creatures to block now for the troll, but... Yeah, so that might have been the the impetus to get Tamios. And with Delirium, I guess, do, do we still have Delirium? Yeah, land, the new iteration, and the, there's a counterspell still. Yeah. Yep. So a triple block would trade the, the now 5-4 troll, because it got shrunk by Persist, with only one of the three toughness creatures. So the troll actually looking pretty poor here. Like another land for Constantine. I have to imagine the frog is coming in now. Yeah, once you have two cards in hand, it can attack into the Merc Tide. I guess a double block of Darcy and Merc Tide is bad, so maybe you wait. Or maybe you attack with both. Both seems bad, though. I feel like you would just double block 
frog and then you just try to race the troll after that? Maybe not. Yeah. This entire situation is awkward. Had Constantine just sent the frog on his previous turn, either he has an extra card to work with here, and Taglarini's at 8, or the Merktide region jump locked, and your frog is a 6-7. All right, pass his turn. I think another persistent hand. No good targets yet. Blood Moon was the key for Taglarini, so we can play that this turn. It cut off a few things from Constantine, but it also cut off Taglarini from double blue. Yeah, I think it hurts Taglarini more than it hurts Constantine at this point. All right, so Darcy has to attack. The frog likely going to eat it. How do you approach this attack for Taglarini? Um, well, I guess it's sending in the Merktide, too. I like being aggressive. Well, we have to exile some cards before we can block. It is a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that's... Doesn't just come with flying for free. All right, intervene. <laughs> All it requires is exiling three from the graveyard, but it could matter. It's an easy thing to miss. Well, we'll see how the judge rules in this instance. Yeah, constant, it's legal to go to blockers, at which point it would be too late to exile the three cards. Yeah, so we'll get a judge involved. We'll see how the judge wants to play this, and uh, we'll get caught up once the judge makes a ruling. Uh, so here's what happened, for those who missed it. 3-3, uh, three, three, Dragon Rage Channeler attacked. Psychic Frog jumped in front of it, but Psychic Frog doesn't have flying naturally. You must exile three cards from your graveyard in order to block. But once the attackers are declared and you try to declare blocks and your creature doesn't have flying, there's a chance the judge says, oh, well, you missed it, and you just take all the damage instead. If that ends up being the case, we could have a pretty scary position for Constantine, whereas before it looked like we were going to be in great shape. Yeah, generally how rewinds work is you rewind to the illegal action and you continue from there. In this case, the illegal action is attempting to block a flyer with a non-flyer. Right. And that happens in the declare, you know, as you're declaring blockers. So if we only, if the judge decides to only rewind to that point, then there's no window for Constantine to then remember to exile the cards in his graveyard to give Psychic Frog flying before blockers are declared. All right, looks like the judges are going to consult, and we'll come back with a ruling in just a few. Uh, go ahead. If it becomes a free attack for Tagliarini, Constantine will drop to eight, and. Uh, Things then start looking a little dicey. The troll can crack back. Maybe you attack with both, because that is a lethal attack when you drop to three cards in hand. So the Tamiya would be forced to chump block the uh, Psychic Frog. You would get five in, but then yeah. you'd be facing lethal on the crackback. So okay. ins instead, you could then uh, just attack for five. If Taglarini then attacks next turn, then you have enough to chump or to eat the Merktide region. You can discard three cards to the frog, remember to exile three. Now you have a seven. Uh, I guess you only two cards is enough. So you you could just eat the Merktide region, only take three, go to five, and then you're still looking good. So things still looking fine here for Constantine. Where's that judge call button at? The judge is talking to them. I know, but is it, I like it being on the screen when we're still in the middle of a judge call. Oh, it just goes away automatically every time? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're rewinding. For game integrity, I hope that he's able to exile three. All right, it looks like he is going to be able to exile three to block. Since that was the intent. And we are going to block. Okay, so... Fortunate turn of events for Constantine. That could have been a huge gaffe. Now it looks like we're going to be 11 to 12. Slightly in Taglarini's favor in terms of life, but I don't like his position, even after resolving this Blood Moon. I think this Blood Moon actively hurts Taglarini, because a lot of his outs to get back into this game are going to start with drawing cantrips. And when he doesn't have that much blue mana. 
and your red cards aren't really that good. All right, Blood Moon it is. Going to go back to Constantine. Another Merc Tide would also be good because it would grow the heck out of your first one. Yeah, tide. exactly. Yeah. Cut yourself off of that out as well. Just the classic Blood Moon doing bad Blood Moon stuff, you know. All right, yeah. big attack here for Constantine. A force block from the Tamiya, I believe. Yeah, there's three cards in hand for Constantine, so he can discard all of them to the Frog if it's unblocked. That'll be seven. The Troll... Uh, I guess the the troll is a four is a four three. So it's we're a five four. So six five into six, five, a five only, four. Yeah, so five four. Yeah. Okay. So you were right. All right. So five coming across. Tagarini down to seven. Post combat taps two. Let's we're going persist. to persist. Uh, is there maybe another frog coming back? And that's okay. spell snare. Well, whatever the target was, irrelevant now. So we don't have black mana for the blood moon. Yep, yeah, blood moon cuts you off of black. So oh man, okay. Back Tagalarini's white. Control Q undo. That's Just the land. Tarn, that's that's pretty bad. So now the Merktide has to stay back to chump the psychic frog, and from there Tagalarini just doesn't have outs. All right, move to attacks. Force the block. Two persistent hand, not really doing a whole lot at the moment. And we'll see at least two cards discarded here to the frog to keep it alive and to kill the Merc Tide. It's holding on to the land. Just discards all of them. Look, unnecessary, but, uh, you know, who cares? You're way ahead. Down to two. Tagalarini. One draw left. Can only answer one of these threats. and Honestly, can't even draw an answer to either. I guess could draw an unholy heat to deal with the troll and then die to the frog. Yeah. Game one goes to Constantine uh, Ken Tarsis on Demir Reanimator. Nicely done. Psychic Frog looked very impressive that game. Psychic Frog was the story of that game. Came down on turn two before the counter spell was up because Constantine was on the play. Yep. And the red removal from the Zimmerktide deck matched up very, very poorly against it. It drew a few extra cards. It forced some chump blocks. Uh, that was Psychic Frog's game. All right. Well, as these players reach for the sideboard to get some help, I'm going to reach over across the table to Ross. What is your expert opinion on what should be coming in from the uh, Is It Murktide deck? So Tagliarini has uh, another Blood Moon in the sideboard, two Consigned Memory, a Disruptor Flute, one Narset Parter Avails, two Obsidian Charmaw, two Rough Tumble, a Spell Snare, a Stern Scolding, two Subtlety, and two Unlicensed Hearse. The Hearses are obviously coming in against the Persist deck. I think Narset is quite good against Tainted Indulgence and... You know, uh, there's Consider in this list as well, the, and Psychic Frog. So uh, the Narset should come in. I think Spell Snare is excellent against this deck. His Bowmasters, Psychic Frog, Persist, Counterspell, and Tainted Indulgence. Uh, so that'll for sure be coming in. Stern Scolding is a possibility. There's Psychic Frogs and Bowmasters. And Frogs are so hard to answer if it hits yes. the battlefield. You probably need to bring in Stern Scolding. It's good to preempt it because yeah. your red removal is so weak and against it. Honestly, Tagliarini might still be expecting Grief to be in this deck. Right. Hasn't seen that much of it. Yeah. Uh, and then I could also potentially see Subtlety. I, I don't think there's enough targets for Subtlety. Uh, but again, if, if Tagliarini is expecting Grief, that we might see them come in. All right. On the other side of things, we have this Reanimator deck. What does this blue-black deck have in store for Is It Murktide? Uh, Constantine has one Brazen Borrower, two Consigned to Memory, one Damping Sphere, two Force of Negation, two Harbinger of the Seas, one Mystical Dispute, two Nile Spellbomb, one Spell Snare, one Toxic Deluge, and two Unmoored Ego in the sideboard. The Mystical Dispute for sure comes in. Um, I don't know how good his Spell Snares are. Yeah, just to counterspell an expressive iteration. Good targets, but not sure if that's enough. I like the Nile Spell Bombs just because they cantrip, so they have a very low opportunity cost to bring in. And I think the Brazen Borrower are also quite good at just dealing with Murktide Regents. That's, the I think, the trickiest threat for Constantine to answer. So, uh, you know, both a threat and an answer to one of their more problematic cards. 
a card that I would uh, like to see in the deck. All right, as these players finish sideboarding, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to our sponsors for this weekend's event. Wings Etc. Grill and Pub is a delicious restaurant right up the street from us, but they're all over the place. We're going to be heading there later for dinner, but it's a great place to take your friends and family uh, to get you a bite to eat, maybe a drink or two, and watch some sports on the big TVs they got. Also, thanks to Ghost Energy. Ghost is keeping us hydrated and energized on these extremely long tournament weekends. we got seven rounds plus top eight to bring you today. All ten of those ma rounds of Magic will be done here on Saturday, and then we're going to do it all again tomorrow. Uh, thanks to Ultimate Guard, the industry leader in TCG supplies, from the Boulder deck boxes to the Katana sleeves. Check your local game store for Ultimate Guard product today. And lastly, thank you to SpiceRack.gg. SpiceRack is brand-new tournament software. And we've been partnering with them over the last few events, and we quite like their product. So check out SpiceRack.gg today. Find a tournament near you. Ask your local game store if they'd like to use SpiceRack for their next tournament. Okay, so now Tagliarini is going to be on the play. That makes Psychic Frog a little easier to answer. You get to have Counterspell potentially available before Frog gets cast. Uh, and I think just having a turn to get down your one-drops you know, a lot of one drops in Taglarini's list has three Tomios in addition to the standard DRCs and Ragavans. That's a lot of ones. I've seen some Murktide decks forego the red one drops in favor of just playing Tomio, then turning into more of a control deck than a tempo deck. Yeah. Taglarini staying aggressive with his list, but Yeah, that build kinda insulates you from things like Orcish Bowmasters, but I think overall it makes you weaker against the like combo-y and like the slower decks in the format that you really like to punish with Rogwin. The Tron decks. Yeah. Any deck that doesn't kill your creatures, that's where Rogwin is just like unbelievable. So Taglierini here taking a mulligan to start a game in number two. Looks like Kentartset's keeping his seven. As we've noted earlier, this is round four of seven, so reaching about the midway portion of this tournament. Win here, put our players two wins away from potentially being in the top eight. Loss here likely eliminates you. All right, this six card hand doesn't look great, but I see a spell snare, I see a lightning bolt, and some lands, so we're keeping. Off to the races, Taglarini plays Fire Bluff Canal and Dragon Race Channel. I'm going to go back Constantine's way. It's just a Delta. Pass back. Taglarini draws a Disruptor Flute. That one's okay against Psychic Frog. Wouldn't be surprised if that name is Persist, just to reduce the threat of an early reanimation. Also makes it harder for Kintarzitz to protect his persists with counter spells. All right, here is a Tommy and an attack for a while. Let's get Tommy on screen. It's one we haven't seen too much of in terms of it actually doing its thing. This one mana legendary creature is part of the flip legendary planeswalker cycle from Modern Horizons 3. Tommy says whenever she attacks, you get to investigate. Uh, she has flying. She has no power, though. That's the big deal. Three toughness, a bigger deal. Uh, and then when you draw your third card for a turn, she transforms into a uh, Planeswalker. And that Planeswalker looks oddly familiar. Looks very similar to Jace, Vren's Prodigy transformed. Pluses, shrinks your opponent's stuff. Minuses, get something back from the graveyard. And then a minus seven ultimate to draw half your deck. Also the maximum hand size. Constantine getting an Undercity Sewers on the unsep there, surveilling Tainted Indulgence into the graveyard. We'll see what he has to stop, you know, falling behind. Because right now, nothing going for him. Multiple advantage-generating threats on Taglierini's side of the battlefield. Yeah, and just a past turn, so likely going to play some sort of instant speed, either interaction or card draw. And we know Taglierini's got some of that rolled up thanks to Spell Snare and Disruptor Flute. Might have been advisable for Constantine to play whatever 
the spell he has on the main phase. Though technically Rini did have a mana up on his own turn, so it's hard to play around Spell Snare when it's so cheap. All right, and we get a clue token off Tomio, so we can crack that to draw in just a moment. So technically Rini generating a little card advantage and um, card selection, but not dealing a lot of damage. So Constantine will have some time to find answers for these threats or set up a big persist turn and take over this game. I've been really enjoying Murktide Regent in a blue-black shell lately with Psychic Frog as the early focal point instead of the red creatures. It's been quite nice, the pair together. Uh, I was actually kind of expecting the Reanimator deck to have some Murktide Regents in it just because it doesn't really hurt you that much. There's an end of turn, Tain Indulgence. Let's see if Tagalurini wants to go for the Counterspell. Instead, we're going to Disrupt our Flute. We'll get confirmation on what is named here from our spotter in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and assume it is Persist. Okay. If Tagalurini is tapping out here, it would be quite vulnerable to Persist otherwise. I believe it's just the land gets discarded. There's Psychic Frog. Psychic Frog will go a long way towards stabilizing this board. Hard for Taglarini to attack into that one. Oh, here's Orgish Bowmasters, though, to knock off the Darcy and... Pew pew! Blood owl! Alright, so the flute was nagaming the Psychic Frog, so that's one of the reasons why it didn't come down this turn. That and Orgish Bowmasters was eating good. There's one of those Nile spell bombs from the sideboard for Cantartsis. Isn't that a Gen Dragon Legend? Cantarsis? Carthus. Hmm. Here's an expressive iteration. Top three. Finds a land, so we have a guaranteed land drop if we were missing some, which I believe we were. Finds two more lands, so not missing them anymore. Yeah. So one of those is going to go to hand, one's going to go to play. We're going to hold up Spell Snare for the next card played. Bowmaster not doing damage because Expressive puts it in hand, not technically drawing. We all know it's drawing, though. Does the Tamiya want to attack? Do you want to protect your life total? You're still at 20. It will shrink quickly, though, especially if you do decide to draw some cards. Or Karma, you will keep getting bigger. Here comes the Tommy. We get a second clue. Both players being rather deliberate. Time's winding down. We're still in game number two, so we need to play... A little faster if we want to try to get to three finished games if we need it. Yeah, this game very far from over. Tax for two. Constantine. Gripful. Could just play Frog here for four mana. Worst case scenario. I'm not sure if that's the best thing to do because it can't grow. But, uh... Frog, frog costs five. Oh, it's three extra. I thought it was two extra on the flute. My, my apologies. Here's a Dark Six Shores tapped, and a passing of the turn with three open. Taglarina going to incept fetch, likely going to get Thundering Falls. There it is. These Surveil Lands, while they are powerful, they do often add 10 plus seconds at the end of many turns. Alright, Surveil coming. Protect this Phoenix. Same in play as the graveyard. We'll see if he finds it. Could be great with the Murktide Regent later. I'll turn the corner. Now I'll spell bomb keeping the graveyard in check for now. I'm Taglarini. I'm looking for counter spells to start pairing with this Tomio or Murktide Regent. Constantine tanking on the Nile spell bomb really doesn't want to see Murktide Regent this turn. Deck doesn't have a ton of answers. Maybe doesn't even have counter spell for it here or just. Doesn't want to try to fight over it, because no Spell Pierce, Spell Snare make that much more difficult for him. Going to go ahead and pop it. You're going to go back Tagalarini's way, empty graveyard, full grip. 
a subtlety drawn, so confirm subtlety came in for Taglarini. Land number four finally for Taglarini missed a land drop, but has hit both thanks to that expressive iteration. And now what can we do with all this extra mana? Start sacking some clues. Yeah, it's tough to do against the Bowmaster. I saw a bolt hanging out, and I think there's still a spell snare. So I think we can spell snare this one, bolt another one, and draw a card with a clue. That'll play. Start filling that graveyard back up again, too. He's thinking about that right now, because a third Bowmaster could be disastrous if he lets uh, Constantine untap. There it is. And we're going to draw. Now, the Planeswalker is not flipping, because this is only the second card drawn for the turn. But we do get to protect ourselves from a Bowmaster, and we're going to go back to Constantine. Does tap Taglarini out. So Constantine knows no counter spell going, unless it's a Force Negation. Here's a Frog. Cost five. Doesn't look nearly as frightening now. Oh, still looks pretty frightening. <laughs> yeah, it's just a 1-2. You block. I block. It's like it already drew a card. That's true. Bolt a frog? Yeah. At least now your red removal works. So if we have a land drop, we can go attack, pop clue, pop clue, flip Tomio. If we don't have a land, we can maybe find one off the first draw. Flipping Tomio here seems quite good. I would agree. I see Murktide Regent. We're a little short on that. Though, is transforming Tomio better than just getting a clue every turn? <laughs> that has been the uh, eternal question since people have started playing with Tomio. Yeah. I think it's contextual. Right now, I think pushing towards uh, getting back Spell Snare, getting back Lightning Bolt uh, to like protect yourself from, from future things might be worthwhile. Getting to the ultimate is also not that difficult. It gets there fairly quickly, especially against an opponent who has very little pressure. And the Tomio's natural plus shrinks the orc army. Yeah, three turns of plusing, and Taglarini would be there. Another five cost frog. Tomio plus also ruins the frog thanks to the flute. Okay, going to go back to Tagalarini's way. We can easily flip the Tamiyo this turn if we so choose. Going to start with Expressive Iteration, though. Top three. Finds Raghavan. I believe that's a hearse and a counterspell, so... Pretty good set of cards. Tagalarini, though, really needs a lance. With all these clues, you want to keep making your land drops. You have plenty to do with your mana. That's where he's been a little bit constricted in this game. Counterspell to hand. First off to the side. This will leave him tapped out, but with Flute on Frog and Hearse in play, most of the threats from Constantine are checked. Constantine would have to go for something like, you know, Swamp Cycle Troll, Persist that, you activate, then have another way to get a creature <laughs> in the graveyard, and another Persist. Yeah, it's tough stuff. Yeah. All right. Tagline passes back. We're going to draw. Looks like a was a troll picked up. If there's a six land hanging out in there, we can just hard cast it. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. I think so too. Just a big threat just... dodges a lot of your removal on the other side as well. Let's do it living in style. So I got five memories of getting whooped by a jungle weaver and it was cast. That's a big boy. It's got reach. My delver of secrets and shambles. Attack for two here. Tomio blocks the frog. Damage is going to go through. Unless, haha, -ha, we're going to bounce the flutes. This is bad news for Taglarini. 
So sink into stupor bounce is the flute. We can pitch a couple of cards. I think there's an Archon in hand. Yeah, let's get sink into stupor on the screen. This is a new card that we haven't seen too much of yet. Most blue decks are playing one or two of these right now. On the front side, you can return a non-land permanent or spell to its owner's hand. Uh, and then on the back side, it's an untapped blue source that deals you three damage if you want it untapped. Otherwise, you can just play it tapped. And so we are using that to bounce the flute. While the flute does have flash, we are tapped out. And so now we're going to discard a couple cards. Oh, no. And we even had the Archon. Discarded Persist Archon says, I don't have a way to get around this hearse. Because I, he just uses Bounce Spell on the, on the flute. He would have needed to bounce the hearse, then find a way to get the Archon in the graveyard. That's just too many steps. This is going to try to ride the frog to victory here instead. All right. We're going to pass back. See if we have an answer to the frog. We can still flute to lock it down and then maybe hit it with an unholy heat. Looks like and it was just a bunch of counter spells in Taglarini's hand. It's a whole bunch of blue cards, really. Blue cards, not the best at killing large creatures. The hearse should be untapped from previous activation, but we'll see if they catch it in the next few seconds. Murktide resolves. So 6-6 six, six, Murktide. We've got a 3-4 Frog. A third card drawn for Constantine means he's threatening to attack through the Murktide region. So I think Taglarini will be will take one hit here, untap, and have Flute next turn to lock down the Frog with counter spells let back to stop anything else from Cantarsis. But if Constantine goes all in on the Frog, there might be nothing Taglarini can do. Eventually, the hearse will outgrow it. Yeah. One neat trick, too, is Tagalarini could play some sort of instant speed thing that goes to the graveyard and then eat his own thing with hearse to grow the Merc Tide. That could be a trick. I don't understand why we're just eating random things from the graveyard. Maybe afraid, afraid of an opposing Merc Tide region. Uh, a lot of Taglarini's plays here have been playing around cards that aren't in Cantarsis' deck. Right. Because he just doesn't know the list. Yeah. All right. Six mana. That's a sink into stupor as an untapped blue source. Here's a troll, Kaza Dune. And we're going to counterspell that. Uh, once again, Constantine opting to play spells proactively instead of attacking with a psychic frog that can't be profitably blocked. Well, he had, what, three cards in hand and a three four oh, frog. He... Yeah, going to need to wait one more turn. The, yeah. the Merc Tide, I believe, is a 7-7. Seven, seven. But now okay. the Flute on the Frog is probably game Frog. over. He initially had that die on 3. You got We changed the die on the Merc Tide. So the Merc Tide is, yeah, is pretty dominant here. The Frog can't gain flying to block it at all. Now that the Flute is back down. So looks like Taglarini going to take this game. All right, let's see if Constantine has anything for him. Drew Fatal Push, so we can push Tamiyo Attack Draw. But we know that Counterspell exists there, so I'm not sure. Either this is probably not going to work, but also I just don't know if he can beat the Counterspell. But if you're Attack Larini, do you need to counter this? If Cantarsis has the answer in hand, you can't counter it, because then you, you Merktide gets answered. And if he doesn't have it, you can counter any answer he draws. Yeah, I'm in to let this resolve. He might have had that push for a turn or two, so it's not known that that's the card he drew. Smart. Let's it resolve. Now we attack. This attacks for four. Taglarina going to fall to 11. And Tartsis will draw a card. And then I think we will be heading to a game three, but with eight minutes on the clock, players are going to have to hurry. Yeah. All right, well... Tagalarini takes game number two. Eight minutes to finish game number three. Meanwhile, we got Heisenberg in the back making some red juice. These players here are shuffling up for game number three. We're going to have Constantine on the play. Uh, do you think he's going to be changing anything in the sideboard on play versus draw? Is there anything that really stands out to you there? I don't think he'll be making changes. I think Taglarini, after two games of not seeing any sort of scam cards, will know that the jig is up. He's seen counter spells. You realize that you know the man, the disruption suite is more uh, counter spell based than discard based. So yeah, Taglarini here is going back in, 
and Constantine will do will do a check, but ultimately decide like I know what's up on the other side. Wait. Ah, okay. All right, we've added five minutes to their clock based on uh, judge extension. So looks like we probably will have the ability to win, uh, finish game number three. I thought the clock seemed a little low. Perhaps it was multiple judge calls that, that did it. Our players in the feature match area also got an extension for the time it takes to move all their stuff and get right. resettled. So I assume that has also been factored in now. I want right. to make sure everybody gets their full 50 minutes. Well, they might not get it again, Ross. Whoever gets bonked here, definitely not getting any more today. They're still in the tournament. Top 16 is 10,000 prize ball tickets. I don't know if that's a lot or not. I think it's probably a that's, lot. That's a lot. How many booster packs can you get for 10,000 prize ball tickets? I don't know, at least seven. Taryn, how, how much is one standard booster pack? All right, so 10,000 divided by 400, Ross. It's like 25. Great, 25 booster packs. Boom. That's math, baby. All right, so which clock is correct? Because the one on our screen says 1050, and the one in the feature match area said somewhere around 15. So we're going to have to sync those up at some point. Yeah, he added eight minutes or something. I don't know. Well, I assume their clock is the correct one. I don't. I assume Taryn's clock is the correct one, but I don't know. That's what we're confirming. We want to make sure these players have the right amount of time to finish their match. Looks like Constantine is going to be keeping... His opener, Tagalarini's, maybe a little landlight, not sure, but we're underway. Looks like Subtlety stayed in. I think that's that card at the top of Tagalarini's hand for the Unholy Heat was drawn for turn. Island Preordain is the play for Tagalarini, top two. All right, we have confirmation from our uh, director that the clock on the screen is correct. So they have nine and a half minutes to play this match. Game number three. Preordain on the stack. Two go to the bottom. Tagalarini draws. We're going to pass it back. In a turn, consider. Looking for a big boy to put into the graveyard. Keeps whatever's on top. That would be a fun way to end this match. Turn one, consider. Ooh, Archon of Cruelty. <laughs> mm, piece of candy. <laughs> nice preordain. Land number two there for Constantine. We're going to go back to Tagalarini. I see a Rogovan. We could dash that. We could also hold up Counterspell. All right, no play. And we're going to fetch Blood St. Meyer. Going to go down to 19. So neither player extending a threat in the first couple turns. That means that making land drops is going to be very important. It means we're going to have counter wars. We need mana to win those counter wars. All happens on one turn. Doesn't matter how many counters are in your hand if you can't cast them. Under City Sewers, the find off the Bloodstained Mire. Looks to the top card. I'm going to think hard on it. It's the only way these players think. All right. And we're just going to cycle that consider after leaving it on top. I don't recommend doing that, personally. If you're going to keep it on top, that's fine. Just draw, use a consider later. The The power of surveil is being able to put it into the graveyard. Also, keeping no lands and the missing your land drop, I think, is also potentially awkward. Yeah, could have main phase this indulgence to find a land. Also would have liked the consider first before surveilling with the land, because no matter w whether you leave on top or in the graveyard, you're going to have a fresh card on top after the consider resolves. Yeah, all good points. All right. Flutter Strands the fetch. Another miss land drop for Constantine. Find Sundering Falls. This Tagalarini. Down to 17. One shock from the Steam Abyss. One fetch for the Flutter Strand. About seven minutes on the clock. Both players looking to finish this match before time. 
Back when he puts Detectives Phoenix into the graveyard. Let's get Detectives Phoenix on the screen. If we can get a Merktide region on the battlefield, we can grant it haste. Pack for a big chunk of damage. Uh, not a lot of evidence in the graveyard to collect at this point. Not yet. Not yet. Ooh, there's a Raghavan in hand for Taglarini. Yeah, the Phoenix is a good one to find. If they're low on time, Phoenix is a card that can close the game very quickly. Yeah. Not only is Bestow from hand pretty good, but Bestow from the graveyard is wild. You find that off of Surveil Land, you find it off of a Consider, put it into the graveyard. It is doing some serious work as the game goes. I do see a Murktide region in hand for Taglarini, but as you said, we don't have the ability to Phoenix just yet. Looks like we are just going to go ahead and eat the Phoenix just so we can get the cost reduction. Counterspell on the Murktide, but Counterspell back wins the day, and Murktide Regent's going to enter the fray. Not going to be too big, just a 5-5 five five right now. But... Just a 2-man 5-5 five five flyer. Yeah, Tombstalker. Yeah, Tombstalker on a dry board is pretty darn good. <laughs> Constantine missing land drops. Doesn't have much in the way of removal for a Murktide Regent in his deck. Well, I see an adventure card. Guess what? I'm being petty, Ross. That's the one of... Bouncing that one back to your hand. Petty theft from Constantine. We're going to go back to Tagalarini's way. Why did we draw a card? Bobble. Excuse me. Good call. Okay. Murktide now ineffective. Dash Rogman, smash you. Yeah, it's monkey time. Finds a mm. dud of a land. Yeah, hitting a land is fine when your opponent is missing land drops. I'd rather hit, you know, Tainted Indulgence or Consider. All right, land number three for Constantine finally comes in. It's a tapped Sing in a Stupor. And a passing of the turn, looking maybe just to cast the Brazen Bar on the Incept as a threat. Not ideal, but... Better than nothing. I do see a fatal push in hand for Constantine, so that'll take care of the Raghavan here. Yeah, I don't even fight. He's just gone. See ya. We should get that Dark Slick Shores off the table. Screaming at me right now. Draws an Archon of Cruelty. If we have a way to put it into the graveyard, it could be. Time for Persist soon. Gonna pass the turn, though. Taglarini, back your way. No more Raghavan to fight. We are getting close to being able to cast a Murktide region again, but it won't be very big. Across all three of these games, Constantine has really struggled to assemble this reanimation plan. Yeah, I think not having grief is a, a problem for the deck's construction. It's way heavier on blue for things like Counterspell, and that does not really lean into the reanimation package very well. Subtlety eating a mystical dispute here on the unstep. There is another subtlety in Taglarini's hand, though. And the graveyard is starting to fill up, though only one instant or sorcery, so a redeployed Murktide Regent would not be very large. Also doesn't have a way to protect it. Doesn't have counterspell, so a counterspell from Constantine will just end all the pressure that he has. Yeah, that's a couple unholy eats in Taglarini's hand that are not very good in this matchup. They're okay against the frogs sometimes, but even the frog can get out of control. So in game number one, I believe it was a 7-8 by the end of it. Constantine draws. So another tap land looks like a watery grave. There's expressive Ooh, iteration. That's the top. a nice one. Yep. Elite Raghavan DRC. Okay. Two more threats. Definitely doesn't need it in Holy Heat. Exiling the Raghavan since we're 100% dashing it right now. Yes, you can dash it from exile, right? Yeah, it's an alternate cost. Yeah, but dash doesn't say from hand or something yeah. silly. Here comes the attack. And we take it. Constantine falls to 12. Exile sees a persist. Well, we can persist the subtlety if we really want to. 
And we can play Darcy, and we still have subtlety in hand. I'm down. Yeah. You got two minutes on the clock. It's time to get this game over with. Agreed. Alright. Gonna cast it. Persist. Targeting subtlety. Surveil one. We're all going to go to the graveyard, and we're going to spell pierce it. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Rog went back in hand. Here we go. Shields are down. I see land instant creature sorcery for Taglarini, so has delirium for this DRC. Land number five and another passing of the turn. Just very weak turns here, all things considered from constant. Just very reactive. Yeah, I think he just had a bunch of counter spells, and so missing the land drops meant that he couldn't deploy them efficiently. Now that he's behind on the battlefield to various threats. Here's a borrower. Does yeah, that's going to eat him. Does Darcy heat. even have delirium? It does. I believe so. Okay. Unholy heat. All right. Borrower down. Five damage coming across. Constantine down to seven. Another <laughs> persist. Well, let's try it again. I like it. There's a counter spell in Constantine's hand, so likely going to get countered, but might as well freely trade for the rest of your opponent's cards. One surveil while you do it. All right, so we are casting the persist. I assume targeting subtlety. I think persist yeah. only hits your own graveyard. Correct. And actually, yeah, Constantine, I don't even think can afford to counter this because he knows about the Merc Tide in hand. He bounced yeah. it earlier. Has to save that counter spell in hand for a Merc Tide region. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Constantine gonna go fetching. Brogman gonna go back to hand. Now, if if Constantine can run a runner, you know, tainted indulgence into Archon Persist, has counterspell to protect it. Yeah. I'll turn around this game in a hurry. Notably it can't be Psychic Frog because of the uh subtlety in Taglarini's hand, which I would imagine gets immediately cast if the frog comes down. There's a sewer that can help too. If, if this puts a big creature onto the bat or into the graveyard, that would be a big help in expanding Kentartsis's range of outs. Okay, looks like we have entered turn, so we are still in Tagalarini's in step. So this is going to be turn zero is Tagalarini's turn. Ooh. Constantine will be turn number one, three, and five. Tagalarini will get turns two and four. That's a big deal for Tagalarini. An extra, you know, twenty seconds would have done him a world of good. If only they had just both played way faster. Here's a Null Spell Bomb. So that will take away Delirium from the DRC. But yep. this is still a two-turn clock just with what's on the battlefield. A 2-2 two -two Flyer and a 1-1. One -one. There's Archon in hand for Kentartsis. It's too far away to be able to hard cast that in time. See if we can scrounge together a draw, though. Draws are still worth one point in tournaments. If you can force a draw, it's better than a loss. Yeah, that would leave both players still alive for the top eight. Okay. Draws for turn. Gonna dash the Rogvan. This is a five point attack. Constantine. Gonna deploy something for three mana here. It's like uh, sink into stupor, the front side. That one's going to bounce something. Let's see what it goes after. I would guess the DR. The moment here, he's a 1-1. One -one, so maybe the Raghavan? Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's three know. mana, gain two life, stop the Raghavan trigger. All right, so three damage coming across. Constantine's going to go down to three. Aguilarini's got one more turn to finish the job. Jatamio, no power on that one, though, so relatively... Mediocre draw. I would go ahead and deploy the Raghavan, but maybe he just wants to hold up the subtlety. Yeah. So you can hard cast it also. There's a Psychic Frog. Well, that is a nice draw. Yeah. It... He doesn't know about the subtlety. I believe yeah. we are going to be casting it. There we go. And there's a counter spell. Okay. Does he have land number six? There's Ayana has Archon and two unknowns in hand, but they weren't land persist. 
Tagler any draws. This is turn number four of turns, I believe. This is his last attack step. We're going to get in there for a lethal attack. And he went. <laughs> Three of a kind wow. left for Constantine in hand. Very awkward. Didn't find the discard outlets that game until the very end when it was a little too late. Yeah. Well, congrats to Tagalarini. Moves to three and one. Four rounds down. Three more Swiss to go in our top eight. Sit on back to the boot. 